y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about the nectar of the gods, which is coffee. And I want to talk about coffee on trail. And this is like a perfect day for talking about coffee on trail because it's like gross and misty and that's my favorite type of morning to sit and have a hot cup of coffee. Now I know a lot of you probably think that instant coffee is like the only way to go on trail. While it is probably the lattice and most convenient form of having coffee on trail, it isn't the only um, reasonable option. You know, there, there are some other options that I'll talk about today. But to get started, I am gonna cover instant coffee because that is what I chose to do on trail. Now, you can do instant coffee, whether you're doing uh, stoveless or you're planning to carry a stove. So um, instant coffee will mix up with water okay um, if you just need that, you know, fix. Uh, whether you have it with hot water or cold water. Myself, I carried a stove, so I like to have a warm cup of coffee. It just was like liquid motivation in the morning for me. So what I would do is just boil eight ounces of water and dump my little instant coffee packet into my cup. And then I don't necessarily love black coffee. I will do that to get my coffee fix, um, but I prefer to mix it with something. My mixer of choice is Carnation Breakfast Essentials for On Trail. Uh, some of the towns that you might go through if you're doing a through hack won't necessarily have that option. I mean, sometimes you're resupplying at a general store or even a gas station. So while they might not have breakfast essentials, you might uh, be able to find some hot chocolate to mix it with. If you're going on a shorter hack, like a section hack or you know, you're out for a few days, something like that, you will be able to, you know, carry whatever you choose to carry from home. But, um, and on a through hike, you can always send yourself some of the stuff ahead. It's just me personally, I don't like going through all that trouble. So I just deal with what I can find along the trail. My all time favorite mixer is powdered milk and honey. Because in normal life, I like to put milk and honey and like a dash of cinnamon. Um, so on trail, I really love if I can emulate that. Now honey can be a little heavy. So what I would do is to justify carrying that much weight, I would try to implement it into other stuff. So my food, or maybe I would carry herbal tea also to have in the evenings. But for lunch, maybe in the stretch where I carried honey, I'd have some tortilla and peanut butter and honey um, for lunch and or dinner. Now in instances where I was trying to do as many miles as I could in a stretch as fast as I could, or say like the 24 hour challenge, then I would still carry the instant coffee, still some of the same mixers, and I just put it in like a Gatorade bottle or something like that and shake it up with some water. And while it was cold and not as tasty to me, you can still have coffee even if you're gonna go stoveless. Some of the common little instant coffee packets that you might find along the way are gonna be like Taster's Choice or Folgers. Those aren't the greatest. You might come across some Starbucks vias in some of the larger towns that you go to. Again, this is stuff that you can send yourself ahead if you're gonna be through hacking. Uh, but I just learned to appreciate whatever I could find because sometimes you can't even find like the single packets and you might have to get like a container of instant coffee and just put it in a Ziploc bag. I think my favorite instant coffee that I came across is Cafe Bustello and I didn't find that a whole lot in the singles packets but for the price versus the taste I think that that was kind of the best deal. They are cheaper than the Starbucks Vias and honestly I think I might even like them a little bit better, but I had a lot of Starbucks via um, over the period of three different trails, so maybe I'm just a little burnt out on those. But Starbucks does tend to be a favorite among hackers. If you look online, you can find all sorts of brands of instant coffee. Um, some are gonna be a little more pricey than others, but oftentimes with coffee, you do get what you pay for. Uh, I like the little cappuccino packets that I could find sometimes, again, usually Starbucks. And then Trader Joe's also has these little convenient packets that comes with the coffee, cream, and sugar, if you like that. Another option that's kind of one step up or maybe like a half step up from instant coffee is the Folgers Singles. That's the only brand that I ever noticed them in. So it looks like little tea bags, but it's got coffee in it. So you just steep it in a hot cup of water like you would a tea bag. Sometimes those were available in towns and sometimes they were not. Um, it is pretty much just as convenient as the instant coffee packets, but you do have a little bit more trash to deal with with that little tea coffee bag. So if you're just looking for 
maybe the coffee taste and the the kick in the butt of caffeine then there is the option of espresso beans and you know you could do that as an addition to the coffee you're already going to have every day or it could be if you're aiming to go stoveless now i will say uh we did have some troubles on trail with espresso beans if we were in the desert or in warmer weather because it seemed that all of the chocolate would melt <laughs> and then it would cool off and harden by morning so then there was just like this brick of chocolatey espresso bean goodness um, and then you'd have to like knock off a piece of it uh, to get some of the espresso beans but yeah espresso beans are a good option for the coffee taste the caffeine boost without having to deal with mixing hot or cold coffee now i'm going to talk about some of the options that aren't instant or instant lack i'm going to talk about my friend perk who if y'all have watched the through hacks of the at pct or cdt that i have up here on youtube um, you might recognize him I met him on the Appalachian Trail and his trail name is Perk because he carried a percolator. Now, this is a great way to have coffee and make friends while you're through hiking and on a larger trail like the AT, it, it makes more sense. So he would oftentimes make some coffee on the fire in the mornings and then share it with everybody. Now he carried a percolator, um, which is a lot heavier than most people want to have in a luxury item especially for coffee but it is an idea if you love coffee and um, you like the idea of the percolator uh, he used an aluminum percolator he never did weigh it but it was not an enameled one you know it was just like the plain aluminum so it was pretty light in the world of percolators on the pct perk decided to step it up a notch and he went with the aeropress which he says with the little metal screen that you can get like third party, I guess the AeroPress company does not actually sell it. They just sell filters. Um, so he used a little metal screen thing so he could use it over and over and over. Um, and with that screen and the AeroPress itself, he said it was seven ounces. So lighter than the percolator, I'm sure. Um, still a little heavy, but again, if you are really into coffee and you want a good cup of coffee, the AeroPress was amazing. Perk did say that when he originally started out with the filters, if you are careful with them and dry them out, he said he could get about four uses out of one of the little filters. So just something to think about if, um, if you don't want to get the, the metal screen and you're wanting to use the paper filters. Perk said that his favorite coffee to make in the AeroPress, like he tried several different uh, types of coffee. He tried several different temperatures and he said that the perfect setup in his opinion for the AeroPress for coffee on trail is to get Cafe Bustelo coffee grounds and to have the water at 185 degrees and I, I'm serious he carried a thermometer and tested and you know tried to figure out um, the level of acidity and everything um, with temperature and just what kind of gave the best taste. So that's what he said was the best setup. And Perk says, even though you've got the extra contraption, the AeroPress is actually pretty easy to clean up. If you wanted to not carry a pot and a mug, he carried a titanium mug that he would just heat water with. And if you were gonna fix only like backpacker meals or um, you were gonna cook in Ziploc freezer bags, that you could get by with just having the mug with the AeroPress. So you would just heat up your water and then pour it in and then pressure coffee into that same titanium mug. So just an option if, um, because you're carrying a little bit of extra weight with the AeroPress, you don't also want to carry a mug and a pot. And I guess you could just carry the pot and um, not the mug and, and drink out of the pot. So options. And on the CDT for signs, Perk decided to try something different and he went with a pour over method. He used a little pour over device. It was the GSI brand. He got it at REI. The pour over weighed less than an ounce. I think it was like 0.4 ounces. It's got three little legs that attach to whatever your mug of choice is. I like to use the Sea to Summit. Perk uses a titanium mug. Um, but anyway, the little legs attach to the top of your cup. And then in the mesh cup that's above your cup, you put the coffee grounds and then pour hot water over it. Now, Perk also tried to see if it gave like a faster flow rate. He tried uh, boiling water and mixing the coffee grounds and then pouring that slurry mixture into the pour over and just to see if it would go any faster. And he found that it did not. Now with the pour over method, I found that the coffee was a good bit colder 
by the time it finally filtered through. And for myself, having a warm cup of coffee is half the reason that I'm doing it. So um, I didn't necessarily love that about it, but it was still good. And to me, it still tasted better than instant. So to kind of compare and contrast the three different methods that Perk used, um, I think that my favorite of those three would be the AeroPress because it seemed to take a little bit less time than the percolator and also definitely the pour over. And so if I was gonna go with something other than instant, that is what I would choose. Um, it does obviously take a little bit longer than instant, but Perk said that the AeroPress was real easy to clean out. So it wasn't that part that took a while. It was more of the setup beforehand. Um, it tasted a lot better than the instant. You know, all three of the methods that Perk used in my opinion, tastes better than, than instant because you're using you know actual coffee grounds. I decided to look at Outdoor Gear Lab and see what they said on some of the methods of making coffee. And they actually had the AeroPress on there as a top pick. They said that the taste just was not rivaled by any other method. Now they mentioned some pour over methods. Those might be better, you know, have a faster flow rate. I don't know, I've never uh, tried those. All of these different contraptions I've talked about today, I will put a link to in the video details so if you want to learn more about any of these um, you can find them there i personally will continue to go with instant just because um, it's easy and to me it's not worth the weight of having seven extra ounces for the aeropress but if i was to try something else that's probably what i would go with i'm sure that you could take a poll of like a hundred different hackers and they would all have different preferred types of coffee, ways to make it, and you know, probably nobody would agree exactly with another person. So I'd love for y'all to share what your preference of coffee is, the way you like to fix it, what brands you like, if you've even done like Perk and figured out temperatures that work well, please feel free to share all of that in the comments below. And that is all I have for y'all today. Thank you so much for watching and we will see y'all next time.